Astrotometry log. It is Wednesday, February 3rd, 2010. It's approximately 0520 UTC. This is a follow-up to the Southern Hemisphere Earthquake Watch that was posted on January 28th, 2010, and also a, a brief overview of the Northern Hemisphere activity. The forecast on the 28th was based on this coronal hole. Uh, this is the uh, EIT instrument, 171 angstr angstroms on the SOHO satellite from January 26th. And as expected, and as forecast in that log, the events that were hypersymmetric with the um, that, that particular coronal hole were in this earthquake quake prone area. The largest was in the uh, Solomon Islands. Um, this was originally a 6.5. They downgraded it to 6.2. There have been several events um, over 5.0 in magnitude and some that were uh, very close to 5. And these all add up to that disturbance that we see as the coronal hole. Um, the uh, size of that coronal hole has to do also with the um, the, the dispersion of, of these events. And so one of the challenges in astrotometry is going to be to differentiate uh, multiple relatively large uh, uh, events from one really large event. Because these, these quakes, uh, the quakes of this size, aren't nearly as big of a threat as the quakes um, that are, you know, say 7 or 7.5 in magnitude. Now it is possible that we will see another very large quake uh, before the end of the forecast watch period, which is on the 6th. There could be another um, a flurry of, of quakes like this, or uh, even one very large quake still um, uh, lie, lying ahead from um, the, the, what the time space uh, discontinuity will be um, uh, in in the next few couple of days. Um, the uh, SOHO um, satellite was baked out from the 27th until the 2nd and so I didn't get a really good look at this. Um, this is the last image I got before the bake out. I didn't really get a good look at what was happening in the northern hemisphere over the past few days. On the 26th, we did see this uh, this hole, and I mentioned that there would, there could be an event that is as is as large as 5.5 in the northern hemisphere. And looking at this again, it seems like this is going to be an area that's landlocked, just based on the um, the differentiation here on the edges. Um, when there is an event in the island regions, it's a lot more modeled. You see, you don't see these sharp edges, um, and usually unless it's uh, continental or landlocked or near the edge of a continent. And so this could be an island near uh, continental edges. It also could be um, internal. Um, this is, I would say, in all probability, this is going to be a northern hemisphere quake between um, 15 north latitude and about 45 north latitude. And so it could be uh, could be somewhere in California, could be somewhere in inland China uh, with quake prone areas there. Um, or it could be Haiti. I don't think this is going to be Haiti again. I don't think it's going to be Indonesia. I think this is going to be an inland event, but not a terribly strong event. And probably in the next few days, I would say. Um, but, the, but there again, um, nothing nothing catastrophic, hopefully. But we did have this bake out period from the 27th until uh, the second. Now this is the latest image and this uh, is something that I'm fairly concerned about coming over the limb here. Um, this is another, uh, this will be hypersymmetric with another northern, northern hemisphere event. Um, I'm not sure where um, and I'm not sure if this is going to continue growing or if it's on its way uh, cl closing back up at this point and I will do another watch for the northern hemisphere in the next day or two. And this also um, I haven't tried to correlate this, 
these cloud patterns yet. And I will uh, try to do that correlation and, and follow up with this. But for now, um, you can expect more um, of this activity as, as predicted uh, in Yellowstone. This, I think this is going to continue for a little while longer. Um, it might pick up even a little bit in the next few days based on um, what I said in the, in the, in the previous uh, forecast. I think that was, I think it was fairly accurate. And so I think Yellowstone will continue probably um, to be fairly active. Um, probably nothing, um, nothing major unless this hole is actually Yellowstone. I don't, I don't think it is. I, I don't expect that this is Yellowstone, but it's possible. And so it's just a little too far north, but it's possible that this is it because because we're at the because we're near the solstice, um, the tilt on the Earth provides a margin of error that is sufficient to uh, to make it in that region, um, just based on the way the interplanetary magnetic field uh, interacts. And so um, the magnetic field remains unsettled the BZ component um, still going, uh, flipping back and forth between north and south. Uh, we'll probably continue to do that for uh, another day or two, um, probably be back to normal by the 6th.